Hello, you beautiful seekers out there, and welcome to another video of my teachings on non-duality. I was actually surprised to find out that I haven't talked about consciousness in a video specifically about consciousness. Obviously, it seems like in my way of explaining things, I always have my concept of consciousness in the background, but I haven't talked about this such an important topic, which I think is the basis of everything. And I guess we take for granted a lot of these things and we, we kind of get into an idea that uh, it's implicit. But also it's because the more we talk about the ineffable, the more confusing it may get. So it's always a good idea to talk about those things that are unexplainable from an angle that promotes or incites the feeling of understanding of it rather than explaining it as a definition. And so appropriately I'm wearing my zero t-shirt because consciousness is equated as zero, void, vacuum, nothingness, and so on. I actually like Ra's description of this void as plenum, which is, if you want to use it, is the opposite of void. And so we cannot escape through language the duality of it and that anything that you say has an opposite. This is why we say non-duality. It doesn't have two. It is just the one thing, but even saying one implies many. So this is the, the caveat, especially in this video when we're, I'm going to talk about the idea of consciousness. And this is something that when I had my spiritual awakening, or you can even call it a consciousness expansion or whatever you want to call it, uh, I simply got interested in the basis of it. What is consciousness? I realized that as a hardcore scientist that I was, I ignored the simple fact of what consciousness is. And in materialistic science, you always get the explanation that the mind generates consciousness, which is just a coping mechanism that we have in materialistic science to deal with the idea that we are created out of parts and that we're not actually one full being. Something that was explored and obviously um, it was hypothesized or talked about simply by our forefathers in science from quantum mechanics in the beginning. Uh, Schrodinger and Einstein and Planck, they all talked about this idea that consciousness is the basis of everything because anything that we know must be known by consciousness and behind consciousness there is nothing or we can't find anything beyond consciousness. That is because that's the basis of everything. And so consciousness is an important, um, especially in Western language, let me get a little bit into the, the problems that at the same time is actually a blessing for us in the Western world. You see, language has a way to describe nature. It has, it's always been, it is the most clumsy way we can find to convey a message about reality. And so language contains always the essence of reality in it. And this is why I love etymology as far as I can get it to, because it does explain a lot of our experience with words. And so the blessing that we have, the blessing and the curse that we have with Western language, and with this I include my mother tongue, which is Spanish and English. They, they're both derived basically or influenced heavily by, uh, by Latin, although English is, of course, Germanic, but it has a huge influence in Latin and most of our words are actually taken from French, quite in fact, or the influence, the highest influence is French. So in any case, it's this complexity that we have in language to have specific words for everything. This is our penchant with the materialistic view of the universe. And so the problem that we find is that we don't have many words to describe that which we have ignored for a long time in the Western world, consciousness. And so we only have mind. Sometimes we even equate the word mind with consciousness. And there's such a huge discrepancy. If you were to tell this to a Buddhist or a non-dual teacher, they would, that of course is not familiar with, um, with our 
Western languages, they would be perplexed to think that there is, that there is, a, um, it, it is the same. Although in the deepest sense of understanding consciousness, mind and consciousness are the same. And this is within the, the more uh, profound understanding that everything is actually consciousness. But in any case, for anybody who is starting, for anybody who is um, trying to understand and learn about uh, reality, and coming from our point of view, uh, the word consciousness falls short to understand what this actually refers to. So consciousness for us is simply something that is generated by the mind or by the brain even, as the materialists would say or claim, yet we don't know how it happens. We don't know how it begins, how it ends, and we have very little research on it. We don't have to go into this research to realize that consciousness is the basis of us. Now, the thing with language is that as we understand that consciousness is something uh, that is, it's at the basis of ourselves, then we don't have the complexity of the culture that goes along in the East, for example, that seems to shroud things and seems to take things for granted. And this is an issue that in the East people have because it's almost like embedded in their language as well. And so it's hard for them to differentiate. So it's not that the Western world is uh, its doom or cursed, but actually that our ignorance allows us to understand even better the nature of consciousness or the nature of reality. So at the very basis, Consciousness is the field in which everything is perceived, in which you can, if you want to see it from a linear perspective, consciousness is that, that one field in which everything fits into. So when we, when we follow the trend of experience, experience of anything, of thoughts, of images, or, or of the physical world, sensations and perceptions, and we trace this back to how do we feel it? Well, we feel it through our minds or through our other uh, sense organs. And that in all of that is perceived or known by something. This something seems, seems to be in the initial stages as separate from us because it's, it's different or separate from the objective experience. However, all of this is happening in unison all the time as we learn of say uh, an experience of vision or um, of touching or smelling or thinking all of this is immediately known by consciousness in other words we're always conscious of anything that is happening we are never unconscious of something nothing ever happens that we are not conscious and all the things that we know we are conscious about it or we know, that's another synonym that we can use for, for consciousness. I have an issue in Spanish because I don't have uh, a word like awareness. And awareness is another one that is, it's quite useful for us to know that we are aware of things. We're always aware. Everything that we know, we have been aware of. And so you can see the consciousness is pervading all of reality, our reality. And even those things that we didn't know, and we could claim that well, I didn't know that, so that must have existed without my knowledge, without my consciousness. Well, that is not true, because as you talk about it, you're already conscious of it. So anything that you're not conscious about it, you can say that doesn't exist, and that goes along with the understanding that consciousness is not simply the knowing of everything, but simply the field in which we perceive things. And so we add in now that the mind is really the filter of consciousness that is present in all living beings and all even inanimate objects because we're talking about one creation that is alive. And when we realize this, that uh, for the grass to feel, because we do sense that the grass uh, has a sensitivity to it and it reacts to its environment, we can say that it has a very primitive way of consciousness, a pr very primitive uh, stage of consciousness, yet it is conscious because it perceives and interacts with its environment. 
all energy that is perceivable in the universe has a sort of interaction with its environment, with space and with the patterns and the laws of uh, physics. So we can say that even that which is the primal or basis of, uh, of our reality has a consciousness to it because it responds to a certain stimuli, just like we do. We just simply are a more complex uh, arrangement of uh, sensitivities to our environment. And so we respond in different ways. We have the ability to think, we have the ability to love, we have the ability to do so many things because as you would follow in the law of one, we are creatures of love. We are creatures of, of self-awareness. And you see this self-awareness gives so much to the basis of reality because nothing in our environment, in our world is self-aware, but us humans. We are aware that we are aware. So in essence, we recognize our own divinity, our own, our own nature. And this is what I like to use in my teachings as a way of understanding the creator, God, divinity, without all the mysticism involved, because we don't need all of that. It's only that once we have perceived consciousness, once we have been illuminated, as it were, by our own true being, is that we can start um, being poetic about it, philosophize about it, create mythical figures and all sorts of stories about the nature of creation, because we revel on this revelation of consciousness. But at the basis of it, we must realize that this is why consciousness in the Western world, and even say in the Western world, in the global world right now, which is um, completely affected, if I can use that word, is completely affected by the materialistic model and the Darwinian uh, model of survival of the fittest, which creates separation between uh, entities and everything that exists in, in nature is that we find that we have issues with trying to understand our connection because this materialist model simply creates the idea that we're separate from nature, that we're supposed to be in, uh, in fight with each other and consciousness as the basis of it becomes a problem and it is not very helpful. Now you can see where in our cultures, in our past and ancient history, when the culture of recognizing that we are all sharing one being and that, that one being, this is not a, a different slant on, on anything in particular that we want to say Christianity or Buddhism or anything like that. This is why we call non-duality the essence of anything or any uh, any teaching that goes to the core of our beingness, of our true share being. It has nothing to do with that, but just with the recognition of that true essence that is within us, then we can see that this one consciousness is the basis of everything. And in the culture that develops from that, there is always a sense of compassion, a sense of, uh, of cooperation, of wanting to be with each other, of trying to help each other, just like the African word that we find, Ubuntu. Ubuntu is, if you are okay, I am okay. If you're not okay, I'm not okay. Simple as that. It's the recognition that you, you have to be in the same uh, sense that I am. We cannot be in a different um, feeling, in a, in a different uh, state of mind because we are connected. And recognizing this, beautiful cultures arise. But we can see in our world that the materialistic model and the Darwinian model has not been helpful. That is because we don't recognize the one thing that we're all together in. And it seems shrouded in, um, in all mysteries because we, we cannot simply recognize that the basis of reality is consciousness. And this is something we can check easily with everybody. The same way, the same feeling that you get by saying that you are conscious it's the same feeling that I get when I say I am conscious. And it's the same feeling if we could ask the grass or animals or interdimensional beings or the whole universe, God itself would say I am conscious and it would have the same feeling. This is our connection with all of us. And this is why consciousness is perhaps the key word that we must use. And I, the way I use it 
away, of course, from the scientific materialistic model, is not the consciousness that is uh, created by the mind. It's not the consciousness that we create as I am a conscious being because I do this and that. Consciousness has no qualities. Consciousness is simply the field in which everything, it is the field, the unified field of everything in which all arises and in which all duality comes out because this is the way that consciousness can experience itself by being infinite. If I haven't said that word, consciousness is the only thing that is infinite. And this is why we say that from consciousness, everything arises because being uh, infinite, it can take any form that it wants. And it has taken the form of different minds, not only of humans, but of plants and animals, interdimensional beings, gods, what have you. Consciousness takes the form of everything because it can and is infinite in potential. This is what we call intelligent infinity. This is what we call the creator. All of this is tied into the same simple fact. And it's not so mysterious. It's not so profound. It's accessible at all times with us and actually just checking the fact that we are conscious. That's all there is. In fact, this goes in so many levels. I can talk about consciousness for hours because well, consciousness is infinite, so I can talk at infinitum about consciousness. But the one thing that I want to leave uh, in this video, and I, it wouldn't be complete this video if I didn't say this, is that recognizing the fact that we are conscious is the basis of meditation. Meditation, yes, there are many forms of meditation. I would never deny that. I would never say that, is, that there is a wrong way of meditation. I think meditation can take many forms. However, all of these forms have at its basis the recognition of our consciousness, of our awareness, that simply we are aware. And so while we can play with different forms of meditation, mantra meditation, guided meditation, and uh, all sorts of uh, imagination meditation or reflection, or all the different jhanas that exist, all of that is always keeping at its basis that we are aware, that feeling of awareness. And so consciousness becomes this focus of our reflection. It is the main realization, believe it or not. I know that this may sound too simple to be true, but anybody who explores this at, at its profundity can attest that this is the most enlightening experience that could ever exist. The simple recognition that you are aware. This is why we say the purpose of being alive is to be alive, to simply recognize that you are alive. It's only when we get into the complexities of our thoughts and our desires and all the, the activity of the mind that we get into um, darkening the sky with clouds. But the sky being consciousness, it's always there. It's always infinite. It's never clouded by anything. It simply m keeps things within it. But it never takes anything out of the sky to be a cloud within the sky. And so as we explore ourse ourselves as conscious beings and we, we can extend ourselves to go into any direction in our exploration of the one self that we are, Consciousness will always follow. Just like a shadow always follows you, whatever you go, then consciousness is always there. And this, this is the, the difference that we have in our limited perception of what consciousness is in the materialistic model of simply thinking that is, it's taken for granted, it's simply there, and we don't know how it's generated. It's not generated. Everything is generated by consciousness. And so, as we recognize this and we integrate this in our lives, things become a lot more easy and um, more pleasant. We don't, we don't have to go into many complexities. Uh, all of this is the nature, like I was saying, of enlightenment. When people talk about enlightenment, believe it or not, is about that recognition. People go through different gradual processes of enlightenment, which is yoga or um, the Zen traditions into monasteries and all of these disciplines of the body and the mind to finally reach to this realization. In the direct path, we go straight to it, to the heart of it. 
And from that enlightenment moment, it's not like you become a Buddha right away, but simply that you start applying this newfound uh, perception of life into your daily basis. It's almost like, if I could use this in the New Age terms, your third eye is open now. And while you have seen from duality all your life, from two eyes, now you're perceiving the same reality of duality, but from your one eye that is consciousness. And so this is the reason why we recognize consciousness at the basis of everything. And that is not so difficult. It's not so complex. It only takes a little bit of challenging our minds into going into the deep essence of ourselves and consciousness is revealed. So I think that's all I wanted to say uh, in essence with the definition of consciousness and how we can reach that. I am working with the direct path if you haven't noticed already, which is my favorite way of explaining um, enlightenment or the realization of our true being. We shouldn't even call it enlightenment anymore because it's just such, seems like a taboo word, uh, word but it's, it's the recognition of our true share being. And it is so simple. It is so direct. It doesn't require any knowledge or anything. If you're interested, of course, there's always links in the description so you can follow that in my work. I appreciate you as always listening to this, being interested, being that one small percentage of the world that is interested in these topics, which is really the recognition of our harmony, our true essence of peace and harmony. So with nothing else to say, I thank you as usual. I love you. I appreciate you, my other self, and I'll see you in the next video.